All right. Thanks for joining. This is Liz from Course Report, which is a resource for finding the coding boot camp that's right for you. Um, if you haven't looked at Course Report yet, use our directory, find schools that fit your needs, check out our blog for interviews with students and instructors and founders at boot camps across the world, um, application tips, webinars, etc. Uh, so we are based in New York, so I try to go to as many boot camp hiring days and student presentations as I can. And a couple weeks ago, I went to the Full Stack Academy hiring night. It was really well run, very fun. Each Full Stack group presented really quickly on their final projects that they completed throughout the course. And then um, they met with hiring companies. Um, all of the final project ideas were really thoughtful. It was a really fun night. But one of the projects that stood out to me was called Split. And it was created by three women, Lindsay, Camilla, and Emmy, who are here today. So I knew I had to do a Q&A with these ladies. So here we are. Um, I'm excited to chat with them about their experience at Full Stack as, you know, as women in tech. And, that, and then they're even going to walk us through Split. And they're going to show us what they were able to actually make in their 13 weeks at Full Stack. So let's get started. First, Lindsay, Camilla, and Emmy, introduce yourselves and maybe um, start by telling us what you were up to before you started at Full Stack. Your sort of like education background, your last career path, and all that fun stuff. Go ahead, Emmy. Uh, yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Emmy. Um, as you can see from the lower third, I guess. <laughs> so. I, before full stack, I was a, I graduated from NYU with a, a bachelor's in speech pathology. And after, after I graduated, I realized I really didn't want to go into that field and decided to work for a year and like figure out another career path. And during that year, I took CS classes um, at night while I was working and fell in love with computer science and just really wanted to get into it. And I found full stack, and that's where I am now. Yeah. I mean, where were you taking CS classes at NYU? Um, I took them actually at Queens College because uh, okay, cool. I live in Queens, and yeah, it, it was a really great experience. Cool. Camilla Lindsay. Um, yeah, so my name's Camilla. Um, right before full st full stack, um, I spent three years in Austin, Texas. I was working at a tech company there called Indeed.com. Um, I was managing the Russian site, so doing uh, a lot of marketing and product support. Uh, I kind of started dabbling into coding to try to make some stuff easier, see if I could uh, automate tasks that were really manual. And then I kind of um, got into it and wanted to see if I could learn enough to actually be a developer. And um, so I ended up moving to New York City a couple months ago, and here I am. Cool. I'm from Houston, so love to meet a fellow Texan. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm Lindsay. I dropped out of McGill Engineering a few years ago. I was studying software engineering there, so I've kind of been exposed to um, computer science and web development for quite a while, but I wasn't convinced that that's what I wanted to do, so I did a lot of soul searching for a few years. Um, and ultimately, down the line, I realized, yeah, this is, this is what I want, and on full stack, I talked to Nimit, and it was like the easiest decision of my life after talking to him. Yeah. So it sounds like it sounds like all three of you had somewhat of a tech background, um, either working in a tech company or having done like computer science courses. Um, what was your goal in doing a boot camp? Was it to get a job? To like get a promotion, to start your own company, what were you thinking? Um, for me, it was, it felt, because I was in a master's program at Queens College, and it felt like it wasn't, they were like very theorizing everything, and I wasn't getting to build anything really, and book, the full stack just felt like appealing to me, just like going in there and just doing it a lot more appealing than going and getting a degree. Was the ultimate goal to like get placed in to, as like a junior developer at a company? For so me, yeah. For definitely. you, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me it seemed like the quickest way to kind of uh, get yeah, ready to actually get a job as a developer. Like, mm -hmm. um, if I, I, I mean I know a lot of people 
um, that took night classes and kind of slowly worked their way up. But it made more sense to me as someone who's young and has no obligations to just go and try it out full time for three months. And <laughs> Camilla, did you think about going back to Indeed and like working as a software developer there? Um, no, I kind of want to stay in New York City and try something new out. Cool. Should Lindsay, I, were you thinking the same thing, or? Yeah, I I I wanted a job. I um I did have a bit of like web development experience before mm -hmm. coming to Fullstack, but I didn't think that experience made me really employable. So I I thought a boot camp would help me out with that. Cool. So, Camilla, you came from Austin to New York. I'm always interested, like, how people found out about the boot camp that they went to and why they chose that one in particular. How did how did you find out about Full Stack in New York, and like, what was what was your research process when you were looking for a boot camp? Uh, I actually took um, a part time class at Maker Square, which is in Austin, mm -hmm. uh, applying to boot like full-time boot camps um, and then I did a lot of research into what I wanted to do. Um, I mostly s looked at either New York City or or Austin because I have family in New York and I was already based in Austin and then I, I kind of looked at the curriculum. Um, full stack was really different because they're one of the few that focus on the JavaScript stack. Mm -hmm. Ruby and Rails, like a lot of the other boot camps do. Um, and yeah, so it was mostly location, curriculum, and then once I had my interviews, it kind of made it easier to decide. Like my interview with them, it was the best one I had, so it made it easy to kind of fit full staff over the other ones. Did anyone, did anyone else apply to other boot camps other than, than just full stack? I applied to a few others. Um, Sorry, that's my Slack notifications are going off nonstop. I don't know if you can hear that, but um. No, you're fine. I uh I also applied to Flatiron, which is in New York, um, and App Academy and uh, G School, like Galvanize. It's in mm -hmm. San Francisco. Um, yeah. You you applied to the one in San Francisco. Yeah. And what did you like? Was there an overwhelming reason why you chose Full Stack in the end? Yeah, same with Camilla. Like, Nimit. Nimit, just Nimit. <laughs> I feel like times, like, um, I, I, I was able to be, like, really honest and open with him about what I wanted in, in my past, and um, I just, like, me as a person, and he was really accepting and understanding. You could just tell that he and David are, like, really good, genuine guys, so that was it. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge part, like, something that sort of sets every bootcamp apart is, like, the staff and who's actually going to be teaching you and, like, supporting you before and during and after, so that makes sense. Um, Emmy, did you only apply to full stack? I did, because I actually applied to the part-time program and <laughs> the flex program, and full stack is the only one that really has a really well thought out flex program, and they accepted me, but Nimit also gave me the, the opportunity to join the November full-time cohort, and I was like, I might as well just jump all in. <laughs> so, yeah. Were you going to keep working and do the Flex program at the same time? Yeah, that was definitely, like, when I went into applying to full sec, that was the plan, mm -hmm. and then it shifted, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it was, it was an easy decision for a lot of you. Um, so tell us... You're not necessarily like just getting into the tech world, but you know, definitely like early on in your careers in 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 tech. Um, on a really broad level, what has been your experience as women in tech, um, or even like as female developers? Uh, do you have any sort of insight on on that? Camilla probably has the most. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I worked at a tech company. And our department wasn't, I mean, this, it was pretty much 50-50. Mm -hmm. We had a woman, so we had a lot of women there. So I didn't really have, I guess, a lot to experience in terms of that. But I did see that in, in the development teams, it was definitely mostly male. Um, and that did kind of contribute to my decision to try and do this because it seems like um, the the development world really needs a lot more girls in it because they need to have a stronger voice since the
the world is, you know, becoming more dependent on technology, and if we're only letting one gender drive every all of its development, that's probably not a good thing. Lindsay and Emmy, how about in CS classes? Like, what was your experience like in in undergrad and graduate CS classes? Emmy. Um, in the the few classes I t I took, I was probably like one of like three women in the class, especially because it was like a night cl class as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, to be honest, I've never seen any like I know I've heard of the the misogyny in the field, but I've never seen it firsthand. And like coming to full stack, I was like worried to like that would be like an issue, but it never was. It's like I completely forgot about it the first day because like Nimit talking to us the first day, the rhetoric about having knowing that this is like an issue, but then this is how we're gonna fix it here at the boot camp was kind of amazing and yeah, so I like I'm still waiting for that to see that firsthand, but I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I think boot camps have like are in a very unique position to you know, make a lot of efforts to get more women into tech, and it seems like Full Stack has definitely like caught on to that. Do you were there a lot of women in your class at Full Stack? There were four others besides me, so the three of us, and then two others. <laughs> and there were like twenty people in your class, yeah. Twenty-five, yes. Twenty-five. Okay, cool. Um, did you like notice anything in particular that Full Stack did to like be supportive, or did you just like sort of notice that rhetoric like on the first day and throughout that it was sort of in their in their conscious, I guess? Uh, I was just mentioning to Camilla um, we kind of do weekly or biweekly like ladies meetings, so ladies. Oh, cool. All like the this it's kind of led by the female staff members Charlotte and Chana um, and Outways. Uh, we all just get together and talk about how we're doing and how we can support each other and make sure nothing like you know sexist is going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's huge. It can seem like kind of unnecessary to some people, but like having a dedicated time is is really important. Um, well, yeah. So, I mean, I think boot camps can be very proactive about supporting women during and after the course. So, it's interesting to hear your experiences. So, thank you for sharing. Um, so, it sounded like, you know, the fact that Full Stack taught mean stack and JavaScript was pretty important to all three of you. Um, did you feel like now that you've finished the course, did you feel like you were satisfied with the actual like curriculum and the material that was taught? Like, did, were you all learning all of the frameworks that you wanted to learn? Did you feel like you sort of covered everything you wanted to? Yeah, I'm definitely really glad I chose um, to go somewhere that focused on the main stack. It really seems to be where a lot of a lot of the development's headed. Um, and I think that the main thing really is that that we learned was that it doesn't really matter what framework you learn. It's mm -hmm. more about learning how to learn. So we kind of focused on, you know, like MongoDB, Angular, <coughs> um, Express a Node. But, um, but now I think it's, it's really easy for any of us to go and learn a different framework or a, a different language. And I heard that a lot of people, you know, most people don't work in the same um, frameworks that we were taught, or even mm -hmm. languages. So, I think I'm definitely glad I, I chose the mean stack because it does give you kind of a good foundation for going off and learning a lot more. Cool. So, so tell us about Split. I guess. Um, I guess first, how did Full Stack like approach the um, projects, these like capstone projects. Did some did people like pitch their ideas, and then people like sort of joined into teams, or how did you decide to work together on on a project? Me, I mean, just just tell them. Oh yeah, so um, we the well at full sec we everybody pitches their ideas, mm -hmm. and. Um, Actually, Split wasn't something that was pitched, I don't think. Not really. Um, 
later on when the teams were forming and then like Camille, Lindsay and I realized we kind of just want to work together on something, on something cool. Um, it took like a couple of days to actually figure out what that was. But yeah, Split was born from that. So you actually decided to work together first and then figured out what like the actual project you wanted to do afterwards? Pretty much, yeah, I think so. Cool. Yeah. Um, how long did you spend on Split in, in total? Did you spend like the last week or longer? <laughs> We spent the last like, little bit more than two weeks. Cool. We were, we were working like all day. Um, I I was at least like I mean all of us. I I live really close to Full Stack, so I I was in the building often. Um, but you know I would be like watching a TV show at home at like eleven and like check my email and there's like six new like emails from Kavilla that GitHub has sent me. I'm like, okay, we should probably go to bed. Um, yeah, we definitely put a lot of a lot of time and effort into it the past few yeah. Can you all share your screen and show us the actual product? Tell us what it does and um, and walk us through how you sort of built it. Yeah. Cool. Entire screen. Yeah. Probably entire screen. I think this is just Chrome. It should work. Oh, there you are. <laughs> see yourself. Oh, yay! <laughs> right, you guys, can, you guys can see, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is like this is your your view of your playlist, um, your queue. You can uh, add songs from any playlist in your default playlist to a different one. So, like, I'll go ahead and add this to remix this. It should be there. I already have a few in there. Um, the player. I'll start playing a song. Hopefully, it's not too loud. Well, wait. First, tell us like what it. Tell us what it does. Tell us like oh, the yeah. pitch for Split. I didn't intro it at all. My bad. Um, <laughs> someone else want to intro it? So I'm not like dominating the. Do we have the extension? Yeah. Okay. I can intro. So so Split is basically. Um, it has two parts. There's a Chrome extension. And then there's also um, a web app. And what it does is um, we wanted to make it easier for people to kind of manage the way they listen to music. Because if you're, if you're online and you're on, like, going to music blogs and YouTube and, you know, um, Tumblr and people are posting stuff on Facebook, there's no way to kind of centralize where you can actually play these songs. Um, and then you just have to have, like, tabs open and remember about it. So um, so we built the extension to kind of automatically scrape each page that you open in your browser. And I guess Lindsay knows more about how the extension works since she did most of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to like go into it. This page is taking a long time to load. But yeah, um, so this is like, as I was kind of showing you, um, as Camilla was speaking, like the extension just checks whatever page you go to to see if there's audio embedded on the page and um, makes it audible to your playlist in our web app. So here, like, we're on this random blog that I always go to because it's one Camilla showed me. Um, and I can just go ahead and add it to, I'll add it to my default. And same with YouTube, we'll come back here. The extension will um, rescrape the page. You can see the number in the top right going up. Oh, cool. Um, I'll add this cash cash song and then we'll head back to my playlist and you'll see these songs that that I grabbed from those two pages are already here um, ready to be played. Uh, uh, the player is global across everywhere in the app so if I like switch to the home page, go to my settings, add like um, add a new playlist or follow someone. I think Emmy and I are following each other and that's it right now. <laughs> Um, so you can follow each other's, like, you can follow friends, what they're listening to also? Yeah. That's cool. Well, I have in my friend music feed over here the songs that Emmy has added. Sorry, Emmy. <laughs> Those okay, Emmy. Those songs, All by right. the way. Those have songs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, 
uh, I don't know, is there anything else that I missed, guys? Um, yes, yeah, so we also built this, um, in case you get bored of your friends and your own um, songs that you've added from your browsing, um, you can just search for songs to add. And we've, we kind of, it searches YouTube and SoundCloud for whatever you want, so, I don't know the name of it. What should we search for? Probably Deep. Taylor Swift. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Um, so, yeah, it just searches, um, here it was searching SoundCloud. So, cool. it mostly has covers since Taylor Swift is not on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Um, you can just, it instantly adds that to your playlist. So if you scroll down here, you'll see the two Taylor Swift songs we just added. And it'll scrape any song from a, any like browser, from a site, or will it also go from Spotify? Um, it will, it will look for Spotify embeds around the web, mm -hmm. um, okay. but we didn't okay. want to actually support or try to even support like playing Spotify audio in our player because you need like the actual native app to be open to play it and for us that was we just we just we just didn't want to. Um, but we do let you bookmark it so if you find a song you can it'll show up in the extension pop up and you can add it and like keep track of it in your Spotify bookmarks um, here. So cool. Are there things um, are there things that you didn't learn in class, like, are, are, I guess, are all of the technologies that you used for Split things that you had, like, learned during the class at Full Stack, or did you, like, run into things that you hadn't learned, and how did you sort of approach that when you didn't know how to do something? Um, I'd say, yeah, there's always something that we haven't learned. I mean, that was, like, most of the app was just figuring out new stuff. Um, but, I mean, we had a lot of support, so we always had people helping us if we, if we got stuck on something, and, you know, that's the main benefit of being a full stack, which is yeah. trying to learn yourself, is that you always have the support around you. And not even necessarily, like, staff support. Um, like, there was another student, shout out to Sam McCord, who was working on a Chrome extension at the same time um, that we were, so it was really, really awesome to have each other to... Um, help out when things were going wrong. I remember Sam's project. Was it graffiti? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Um, all these Chrome extensions, pretty cool. <laughs> um, can you tell us about uh, like a problem or an issue that you ran into while you were creating Split and how you sort of got over that, if you remember one? Um, I, I, the what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, for the first, like, half of our time spent working on this, we were, weren't 100% sure we would be able to get this, this player to work, um, be able to stream SoundCloud, YouTube, and Tumblr audio through the same player, um, but, I mean, we were clever about it, we, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds bad, but we, um, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we kind of... I don't, I don't know how technical I should get into it, but um, we yeah, definitely... Yeah, feel free. All right, so um, if anyone who's watching this is, like, familiar with Angular, um, we kind of use object orientation in Angular factories to make our, our global player ignorant about, like, where the song is actually coming from. So we have a class for, like, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Tumblr. Um, I don't know if you guys knew, but SoundCloud artists can set their music to either streamable or not streamable. That was another huge problem within this, this problem, um, where you can't actually just, like, plug the source into, like, an HTML, HTML5 audio tag, like, because they've just, they just don't want you to, because they're mean. So mm -hmm. you have to, like, use the, the SoundCloud, or we had to use the SoundCloud widget API. Um, so it's, like, we're using two different approaches to streaming SoundCloud depending on what the artist wants, pretty much. Um, so we have two different, like, Angular factories depending on whether whether the SoundCloud artist has approved their song to be streamed. Um, and all of these, these factories and classes adhere to the same rules, like, um, 
they all have the same methods like play, pause, seek to, get current time, duration, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool. No, that's an interesting problem. That's cool. Um, you can unshare your screen so that we can see your beautiful faces again, too. Um, oh, or my beautiful face. Um, <laughs> well, it seems like Split is like something that I would use. To, are there plans to launch it to the public in the future, or was this uh, a class project strictly? Uh, yeah, we're we're pretty much maybe a day or two away from being able to release it to everyone. We have a few people testing out some last minute stuff. Um, the extension's on the web store, but only to specific users, so hopefully in the next day or two, or by early next week, it'll be out for everyone to be able to install and download. Very cool. Well, thank you for taking us through that project. Um, it's always cool to just like see what you were actually able to accomplish um, after you know learning for three, I'm sure, short months. Um, so one of the questions that I get most often is about job placement and how schools are sort of you know approaching preparing you for the real world and like actually getting a job. So I just want to talk about that really quickly. Um, how did Full Stack prepare you for interviews, you know, like resume building and things like that, um, if, if at all? Jazz, I can't answer everything. <laughs> um, they definitely helped us a lot with that. There is, like, during our senior phase, there was a lot of, um, we had, like, technical questions every morning. Uh, we had Shauna, who is our like our job guru. She like helped us through everything, like resumes, LinkedIn, like absolutely everything. And we could come to her for with any questions we've like ever had ever. So it was kind of like a very helpful uh, environment for that specifically. Did you um, go through like the hiring day? after the projects. I left after the projects, so I didn't really like see, but was did everybody talk to like employers that night or um Well these guys are gonna be full sec fellows. Oh. Let's talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> um so they didn't go through it but I went through it. Mm -hmm. Um it was pretty much just like intense speed dating but with with really cool employers. I, I had a good time. It was honestly probably like a less pressure situation than having real interviews because you're just in and out, mm -hmm. um, quickly get to know each other. It's good. And so, Lindsay, are you on the job search now? Um, are you focusing on a split or what's your status? Um, I'm doing a bit of both. I've, I've been um, searching around this week, but I've also still been in at full stack. Camilla and I are here now. just finishing up some things um, for Split. And Emmy's been in this week as well working, so um, kind of just, you know, yeah, just, just doing both. Cool. Well, you're like a week out, so <laughs> no pressure or anything, but it'll be great to see where, where you end up. Um, Emmy and Camilla, since you are going to be Full Stack Fellows, can you tell us a little bit about that? What is a Full Stack Fellow? What is it what are you doing? How long does it last? Um, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so the fellows program is it's the same length of time as the the full stack program. Mm -hmm. So it's um, 13 weeks after you graduate, um, and it's split into two parts. So the first part, um, you're kind of helping um, the new students um, answering any questions they might have, um, and then doing the second part, you uh, you work on a project which is either working on full stack software to so get some experience working on something that's used by people daily, um, or else you can also um, kind of create your own workshop, or mm -hmm. which is basically like, um, uh, like you focus on one thing to teach people and then create exercises, or an, or an exercise um, that they have to build um, to learn about a certain subject or, or a tool. Cool. Did you have to apply for that? Yeah, you, 
Okay. Yeah, they have an application process and there's interviews and stuff. So, um, yeah, and then it, it depends really on the cohort, like how many people apply and how many people get accepted. Awesome. Well, congratulations to both of you for doing that. Um, I guess my last question is just since you are, you know, you finished the, the class, was full stack worth the money? Would you recommend it to a friend? Um, what's your sort of overall takeaway from it? Um, yeah, I think that like if you're looking for a career change and you're interested in development, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for people that are just like, oh, I heard developers make a lot of money. Let me do this. <laughs> but why not? Why, why <laughs> don't you recommend it for that kind of person? <laughs> but yeah, for someone who just wants to learn, like I don't think I could have learned this much in such a short period of time if I hadn't come here. Because it's yeah. like it's a big time commitment as exactly. well as like a big like life commitment as well. So it's like it's three months, but it's three months focusing on one thing, like, without focusing on anything else. And you have to, like, really love going in every day. Like, I, like we spent, like, in the entire days at full sec, and I literally didn't feel anything. Like, I didn't feel it at all. So, yeah. yeah. Like, you didn't feel burnt out at all? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I loved coming here every day. Um, I'm sad to have to leave. Like the people, full stack. I think one thing that's unique about full stack is like the people that that come here are all really special and like overwhelmingly kind and giving and helpful. And um, I they they definitely made the experience for me. And I would recommend it to anyone who's even even a little bit considering it. Like in the back of their head, like it's definitely a great decision. Awesome. Well, having after spending 13 weeks doing like one thing with the same group of people and not actually wanting to leave that is kind of a ringing endorsement. So I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> is there um, is there anything that we totally skipped over that you want to share with um, with our readers or our viewers? I guess like potential boot camp students. Anything about boot camps in general or your experience or <laughs> All good. This is a ton of really yeah. good information, so I, I think I think we've covered a lot. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank y'all so much um, for joining us and sharing your experience. And we can't wait to see Split live. We'll send it out to um, all of our all of all of our course reporters after once it's live in a in a week. Cool. Yeah. Thank, right. you so much. thank you so much. All right. Thanks, y'all.